Get this figure and more at the Big Bad Toy Store. Links in the description. <laughs> I'm okay. Hey, my name is Jobby, and today we're taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Grimlock. And this figure comes from the brand new Transformers Studio Series line. I've actually taken a look at another figure from that line last time, so if you want to check out the video, go check it out. <laughs> but just in case you didn't watch that video, as these fine gentlemen clearly did not, the studio series aims to produce figures that are more screen accurate to the Transformers movies than ever before. Michael Bay joke here? And this particular figure caught my attention because it was seemingly screen accurate and also, I prefer this design over blackouts. And this time, I actually couldn't give less of a care because I still haven't watched Age of Extinction and don't feel the need to. One of my friends told me the movie's so long that it ends five times. Come to think of it, where the hell even is the- <laughs> The painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing. Almost the entire surface of the figure is covered in this really nice dry brushing effect. And for those of you who don't know, dry brushing is just when you put a bit of paint on your brush, wipe it off on some napkin or tissue, and go over to the figure and cover it with that dry brush to really highlight that raised detail. So when I say dry brush, I'm referring to all of this aquamarine metallic detail. It's a great way to add some realism to your paint jobs, especially your Gundam model kits. I think we're good. There's a very organic quality to the paintwork, so much so that it almost looks like a custom painted transformer. For example, right here at the crotch, you could tell where the brush strokes were just... Of course, that dry brush serves to accentuate all the great mechanical detail that's already on here. Now, the only parts that I can pick out that don't look entirely screen accurate from what I've seen is this whole assembly at the left arm. I mean, look at that. He's got little left arms on his left arm and he's got gigantic dinosaur feet at the back of his robot feet other than that the rest of the figure is streamlined and completely kibble free just look where we came from we really did come a long way but if i had to pick out at least one complaint about this guy it would be that he requires even more dry brushing there's a few spots on this guy that are left completely unpainted and they stand out and not in a good way they look kind of cheap i mean i do have a few years of painting experience under the belt i do have a couple of brushes i could always just do it myself like how i used to do with my gun <laughs> And despite the design looking pretty edgy, all of the pointy bits on the figure are actually not that pointy. Almost every part of the figure that had the potential to poke your kid's eye out if they were hard plastic are made of this flexible material. Even the dinosaur heads at the shoulders, these extremely sharp looking teeth, it doesn't hurt at all. Although if I did keep doing this at extremely high speed, I'm pretty sure I could draw blood. Ah! Every other part on the figure is made out of this nice solid plastic. The figure feels alright! Except this part. Not only does this crotch plate disassemble easily, but this whole skirt area is pretty clunky. Ooh. Yes, it is screen accurate, but it does get in the way of leg possibility. This figure has no accessories, unless you count that cardboard backdrop. Ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be a swivel. Can look up that far and look down that far. Rotation at the shoulder. Can move back that far. Arm moves out. Swivel here. Bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel. No wrist swivel here because there is no wrist. But this arm does have a hinge joint at the elbow flat. Hinge joint here. Ooh, waist swivel. Front skirt moves up. Which allows the side skirts to move out that far. That allows for a decent kick. Can't move back that far. Beautiful spread. Which reminds me, I forgot to mention this guy's spread in my blackout review, so I'll do that now. Beautiful spread. Swivel here. Bend at the knee. Hinge joint at the kneecap. Ball joint at the ankle. Which allows for a kind of useless pivot. I guess you can call this a toe bend, but that's more for the transformation. And of course, every ball joint. Posability on this guy is okay. It's fairly limited. I would have liked to seen more range at the ankle pivot, but at least it's got a waist swivel. But what he lacks in posability, he more makes up for in his size. Yeah, this guy's definitely 
one of these. Here's Madoka Godzilla Prime, Blackout, and the original Voyager Class Age of Extinction Grimlock. The Studio Series version is obviously a huge step up, even though because it's one of my most popular reviews, I still have a soft spot for this figure. And that soft spot is right here. Yeah, oh no. Despite the limited posability, I can safely say that the robot mode is great. But as for his alternate <laughs> mode... Uh... Okay, so I'm filming this part way after I recorded everything. I completely missed that this whole tail section actually snaps in. So if you see that throughout the whole review, the tail is just drooping down. It's because I'm an idiot. The T-Rex mode, it's not bad, but definitely not perfect. I think that might be related to the simple transformation. Not that I have anything against simple transformations, it's just that this guy's transformation is not completely satisfying. I mean, the first time I transformed this thing, which you can see in my unboxing video, which the links in the description. I felt that I missed a few steps. I especially thought I missed something at the legs. But nope, this is as far as the legs can transform. And that's kind of a shame because the legs look a little bit too long. This slight backwards bend is not enough to convince me that this still isn't a giant robot calf. It isn't even movie accurate if you care. But other than these disproportionate legs, the rest of the guy's proportions are not that bad. The head is big but not overly big. The body is long but it's not a hot dog. And of course the sculpting is great. Carries over from the robot mode. I especially like the spine detail at the back, that really hides that robot head well. And as for the dinosaur head, it's appropriately vicious looking, but the overbite kind of kills the intimidation. Also, he has a gap in his throat. And the paint job is still fantastic, there's even some dry brushing at this part of the tail, which were the head halves in robot mode, but I wish that they could have snapped in somehow, they just kind of sit there. And there's some other parts on this mode that could have snapped in. <laughs> Jeez, no wonder this mode feels incomplete. However, the tight joints that carry over from the robot mode still make it feel... Well, some of you could make the argument that some of these not snapping in parts allows for more POSABILITY! But that posability is so limited that it doesn't even matter. You also get leg articulation, of course the same as the robot mode. And if you move it up, that kind of solves my issue with the longer legs a little bit. Mouth get... Oh shit. Mouth can open, but it can't close all the way. And there's no actual articulation at the head itself. This can't possibly count. Which brings me to a point. If you're gonna kill any head articulation, you might as well kill the whole thing. I mean, you could have used the mass from these calves to fill in this whole gap. I would rather have a perfectly proportioned brick than an awkwardly proportioned mass of swivels. At least this awkwardly proportioned mass of swivels is big because size matters, right? Yes. Madoka Godzilla Prime, Blackout, and Grimlock. And is it just me, or does this guy's proportions look worryingly similar to the Voyager class? They both do look like a pair of drumsticks, don't they? However, the brilliant painting and sculpting on the leader class figure elevates it. And I feel I should mention this, there's actually an upgrade kit for this figure coming out by DNA Designs. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, it's just that a bunch of you guys have been telling me about it. And it looks great, the parts that it comes with would make this figure amazing, double kiss worthy. But as the figure is, this figure's awesome. But I do like Blackout better. Even still, I do recommend this figure to any Age of Extinction fans. Dinosaur mode, definitely not perfect, but for Grimlock figures, it's unfortunately a common thing. Unless it's a completely unaffordable third-party figure. Luckily for you, this guy is not that. Big bad toy store. Yeah, the figure is a little too expensive for the quality of engineering that you're getting, but just like Blackout, it is standard for a leader class. But if for some reason you wanted both of them, there is a two-pack available, which is the deal that I got. So if you like this video, give me a like, leave Leave a comment, let me know what you think. And you know what? I'm tired of Grimlock just getting shafted in his dinosaur mode. I mean, this guy is the king of the Dinobots. He deserves way better than what official companies have been giving him. I think I might have to turn to third-party sources to find a little justice. I know, I got the sweater on because it got a little chilly for no- Oh, no, oh, not again! Oh, 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 oh,
I'm actually not gonna do the Vulcan review next. Um. <laughs>